We've got an update on that fatal plane crash we reported on earlier today. The Idaho National Guard dedicated a jet to the Pocatello Regional Airport today to celebrate the 75th anniversary of an airbase being located there. And we're saying so long to 70s and 80s, and we're going to see a cooler pattern as we head into next week. Local News 8 at 6 starts right now. You're watching Local News 8 at 6. Local people, local news. A deadly plane crash near Palisades is now under investigation by the NTSB and the FFA. It happened near Palisades. The Bonneville County Sheriff's Office tells us it happened near Sheep Mountain. The pilot, Travis Hamilton of Oklahoma, died in the crash. His 14-year-old daughter, Annabeth, was in the plane with him. She was taken to Ermac, and she was released this afternoon. That's where we find Local News 8's Allison Zimmerman, who brings us updates from today. Allison, what do we know now? Jay, as far as we know, the girl is okay. A family friend told us she has some bumps and bruises. Now, that same family friend was actually flying alongside the Hamiltons, and he made the call to emergency crews. You know, Travis unfortunately passed yesterday doing exactly what he loved. Uh, he was up flying a, uh, a Husky aircraft, which he absolutely was delighted to fly. He had his daughter in the back seat with him. They were having a wonderful time and uh, just unfortunately tragic struck. Hamilton and his daughter were in this two-seater Husky plane that took off in Alpine. This morning, crews retrieved the pilot's body from the mountain. He was taken to a funeral home in Idaho Falls. The plane is still at the crash site. I spoke to the sheriff earlier today. He tells me the area of the crash is incredibly difficult to get to, and the cause is still unclear. Um, we probably would be just barely getting to the crash site right now, uh, and then trying to get out would have been very difficult. So the handling of the, the way we did with the aircraft this morning made it much simpler, much safer, and we were able to, to now get the, the sheriff operation also tells done me very He's quickly. incredibly grateful for all the search crews that were involved in the process, as well as the Swan Valley Fire Department. The NTSB did arrive this afternoon. They are going to continue investigating the crash and eventually remove the plane from site. Live at Ermac, I'm Allison Zimmerman. Thank you, Allison. For updates on the investigation, you can visit our website at localnews8.com. Well, time now to turn our attention to our chief meteorologist, Michael Coates, with a look at your weather. Michael, gorgeous day. Yeah, it's a great night for high school football, Jay. As you're heading out to the stadium, you'll probably need a sweatshirt at least towards the end of the game because it will get a bit cold as the sun has set. But uh, we are looking still at above average temperatures even for the evening hours tonight before reality sets in and cooler wet weather on the way for the weekend, which will take us back into what we should be seeing for fall weather. It'll nonetheless, a beautiful shot right now from the Star Valley webcam. We do have a little bit of some high level cloud cover that's been drifting on through the region. And that high level cloud cover is just a really the hint of what's in the forecast. When you start to see those high level clouds, it's a sign, yeah, we could be getting some stormy weather. And sure enough, Mother Nature is delivering on that. Wet weather throughout the West, especially some intense storm action right now across Arizona, the Phoenix Metroplex. Also, you're getting into Las Vegas with some scattered showers moving into southern Nevada. This stuff is slowly rotating into our region as we go into the weekend, especially for Saturday night. But current numbers outside Idaho Falls 73, winds north at six miles an hour. Lots of sunshine overhead. 78 at the Pocatello Farm Bureau Cam. Winds out of the north northeast at 5 miles an hour. And continue to see the warm conditions around the rest of the region. 71 for Driggs. 75 in Arco. 77 in Twin. And we're looking at light wind speeds for now. More wind in the forecast as we head through into the weekend. Uh, average low tonight back into the upper 30s. We're going to stay so long to the 70s and 80s in my 8-day forecast for you later in the show. Jay, over to you. Thank you, Michael. The Idaho National Guard dedicated an A-10C Thunderbolt airplane to the city of Chubbuck today. The dedication ceremony was held at the Pocatello Regional Airport. Reporter Angelina Dixon attended the event to see it take flight. And Angelina, what brought about that dedication today? Jay, since this is the 75th anniversary of having an air base in Pocatello, airport manager David Allen wanted to celebrate with the military theme of their history and tradition. Planes, planes, and more planes at the AV Center of the Regional Airport. But today, the National Guard brought their own to dedicate to the city of Chubbuck. Skyfest doesn't start until two years from now, but the ceremony was an honorable opportunity to invite everyone out for a preview. It's a symbolic of the community support that is provided from the local communities in Idaho and vital to our mission and our personnel in the Idaho Air National Guard. The planes will not stay in the country for long. We are um, um, scheduled 
for an overseas trip uh, next year. And these aircraft will be a part of that mission. And so keep your eyes out. Maybe you'll see it in the news. They'll be moving around a lot. These planes are not staying in Pocatello. They're heading back to Boise this afternoon. I spotted a veteran in the crowd who has known a thing or two about planes for quite some time. Well, this is wonderful to come out here to see some of these airplanes again. Because, of course, they're all new. Uh, I started flying uh, in 1940, before World War II. And some were even excited about this particular plane. They told it it was ours, but they didn't give me a set of keys, so apparently we don't get to keep it. The National Guard is planning to dedicate all of their 21 A-10 airplanes one place at a time. Reporting in the Pocatello Newsroom, I'm Angelina Dixon. All right, thanks, Angelina. Looks like some other cities will get their chance, too. This event was part of the Pride of Chubbuck, and the Pride of Pocatello was dedicated just this past summer. Well, when you're out and about and you need to get some quick cash, you might want to think twice before you make a withdrawal from an ATM that is not from your own bank. According to an annual survey, the average ATM fee for those who are not cardholders of that bank hit a record of $4.52. These fees are used to service the ATMs. A branch manager of a local credit union says the ATMs aren't just there to nickel and dime you. It costs to use the ATM, so we have to have them serviced. We have to keep them up. Um, there's people from the companies that run our ATMs that come out and do service calls for us. According to bank rate survey of the highest ATM fees in 25 larger markets, the highest cost $5.15 in Atlanta and San Francisco is the lowest at $3.85. The former Blackfoot soccer coach accused of lewd conduct with one of her students was back in court. Alicia Yates told a Bingham County judge this morning she's not guilty. She's charged with five felony counts of lewd conduct with a child under 16. The judge set her bail at $50,000. Her trial date has not been set. The man charged with shooting at police and leading them on an all-night manhunt Tuesday night is being held at the Bannock County Jail on a couple of $50,000 bonds. Zachary Lee Davis was in court today. He's being charged with two counts of aggravated assault, one count of eluding a police officer, and one count of being a felon in possession of a firearm. Davis was charged yesterday with a count of grand theft and one count of possession of a financial transaction card and one felony count of attempting to elude a police officer. He's being held on a $50,000 bond in both these cases. He'll be back in court for a preliminary hearing on both cases October 27th. Those going to the Greenbelt next week will see kind of a strange sight. Idaho Falls Power is going to shut down the falls while tackling a trio of projects tied to the city hydropower plant. Work is scheduled to start October 19th to repair concrete damage on the diversion dam that creates the falls. Work is scheduled to coincide with two other projects that will be going on, which are expected to last for two days. The power company decided by doing all three projects at once, they'll be able to limit downtime of the city plant. The repairs are minor, so work on the dam is expected to only take about a day. It's not real. It didn't happen. We're not sure the motivation. Find out how this family in Utah was stuck holding the bill after someone promised to help pay for their medical bills. And first alerts Michael Coates is an extra with your detailed forecast. We'll be right back.